All you people, sit up straight. So be in a position where you can feel your thighs moving down. And your shoulders directly over your hips. So whatever position that is, even if it's in a chair or whatever, is a good position to start. Rest your hands on your thighs and close your eyes. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. Slow, even breaths. With your inhalation, lengthen up through the front of your body. With your exhalation, release your shoulders down. Rest your shoulder blades into your back. Inhale, lengthen. Lengthen the front of your body. Exhale, release the back of your body. And then gently open your eyes. All right, take your legs out in front of you, not necessarily in Dandasana, but just take them out and let them do what, they're, what they'll do. So don't press your thighs down, don't uh, like try to be in a pose, just see what your legs look like when you just put them in front of you. And then I want you to look at both your, your feet and compare them to each other. So frequently one leg will be more turned out or one foot will come, uh, the base of the big toe side will come towards you more than the other foot. One foot may be more turned at the ankle. And just notice that and don't try to fix it. And then look at your two knees and see if that same movement is being translated to your knees. So for me, this little toe side moves a lot faster that way and this knee goes up. Now I could fix the feet and still leave the knees where they are and this leg would still turn out. So to me that says something's going on in my hip because the knees are compared to the ankles and, and hips, a relatively simple joint. The, for the most part, they move like this. There's some turn to the lower leg and the knee, but for the most part, and for today's thought, just think we're not gonna do Padmasana, so there's not gonna be a lot of turning of the lower leg. 
but they just move back and forth. So usually if something is going on with the knees, it's something going on with the feet, including the ankle or the hips. So now come into uh, downward facing dog. Anubhukha Svanasana. And don't look back at your feet, just go up. But once you're up, don't adjust. But again, now that you're weight bearing, look at your ankles, look at your feet and how they're arranged. And if the feet are even, but the knees are not, then you have to work on the hip. So you can turn one leg in and not the other leg and see if you can get the knees to point the same direction. And if you're looking more at your feet, then see how much of the heel of each foot you can see, the inner heel, right will down to the outer heel. Or compare your ankles. Or the way your toes face forward. And then see if moving your feet fixes the knee or moving your hip fixes the knee, or both. More likely, it's going to be your hip that's the issue than your feet. The feet just do what the, the hips allow them. And come back to your hands and knees, big toes together, knees apart. Sit back onto your heels. And here you may notice if you're sitting on your heels and your legs are apart, that if you're in the center of your sticky mat, uh, you may see that one leg is further out than the other. So that would definitely be a hip since you're not using your feet. Or, um, there's more room on one side. So see if you can fix that so that they're evenly apart. And then walk your hands forward and come into child pose. Now as you push your hands forward, take your hips back. See if, uh, especially if your hips are actually on your heels, See if one hip is closer to the heel than the other. So you have more contact with one leg than the other. And the one that feels lighter, see if there's anything you can do to get that one heavier. So for me, it would be across the body, so my left hip is lighter. So I push down with my right hand to get the left hip down. For me, that works a little better than pushing with the left hand. Okay. And then come back up into Auto Push One Asana. And notice if anything changed with the angles, the knees, the hips. Then bring your right foot forward and bring your left foot forward. Go all the way to Utanasana. And again, notice if uh, one leg turns out more, uh, one leg turns in more, and uh, have them even. Then walk back with the right foot, walk back with the left foot. Notice if uh, one foot is now ahead of the other foot. And walk forward with the left foot, forward with the right foot. See if one foot is ahead of the other. 
then back with the left foot, back with the right foot. Again, check. All right, now you're gonna jump forward with your legs apart and check the same thing. So push into your hands, bend your knees, and you don't have to jump that far forward. It will happen no matter how far you jump forward. And jump forward. Now look at your knees. You know, one leg will probably be turned out. And also look at your feet, how one foot is further forward than the other foot. So fix it. So they're even. Knee is rolling back equally. Or lay, or hips, technically. Bend your knees, jump back. Yeah. For me, what happened is the feet stayed even, but they moved off to the right. So now I need to bring them in line. Look forward, jump forward. See if they, they're getting any better. Jump back. And they're a little better. All right. Now rest and take a block. If you have a block, and put it between your knees. Like that. And then once it's between your knees, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to squeeze the outer legs in. And now your feet should be pointing the same distance forward, or your knees should be pointing the same distance forward. And then hop forward. And see if that, that feedback of the block, hop back, helped uh, the rotation of the hips so that the feet stay more or less in line. And then you can hop forward and hop back a few times. You know, warm you up on this very muggy day. And the block may not do anything. It may just make you more aware that your legs aren't even. And that's just the way it goes. All right, so come up to standing. Now you'll need two blocks. So for me, I'm going to put the lower block on its medium width and the upper block on its narrow width because I have large legs. So you kind of have to adjust so your legs are pointing forward. Yeah, you can look down, look out. So you stand with a block between your thighs and a block between your feet. All right, you can lift your arms up. All right, now notice without looking down, feel how the block between your feet, uh, one ankle is closer to the block than the other. Maybe the big toe of one foot and the heel of the other touch differently. So can you squeeze in the upper block as well as the lower block and get more feedback from it? All right, release your arms. Is the box. All right, so if you have a blanket, roll up a blanket. If you have a sticky mat, roll up a sticky mat. My sticky mat is over here at my pretend broke wall. Now I like using a sticky mat just because it stays better, but why not just fine? Roll it up. And then place it between, behind your knees and sit back onto your heels. You get extra feedback from the roll sticky mat.
So as you sit down, pull your abdomen back so you're getting as close to your heels as possible. Interlock your fingers, turn your palms out, lift your arms up. Squeeze your elbows in. Extend through your wrist. Bring your hands back in and down. Interlock them behind. Roll your shoulders back. And lift your arms up. So as you lift your arms up, don't roll the chest forward and the buttocks back. Keep the lower ribs back and lift the arms. Then release your arms. Take the sticky mat and place it on your heels. Come to the leaf lower. Interlock your fingers with the other one on top. Turn your palms out. Pull your elbows in, extend through your wrists. And bring your arms back in and down. Interlock behind, the other one on top. Roll your shoulders back. Lift your arms up. And release your arms down. Roll your shoulders. Come off the sticky mat or blanket or whatever it is. Stand up. And you're going to fold forward into Uttadasana. And see what's going on with your legs. And my, my right leg's still turning out. Oh, my left leg is still turning out. So I have to roll that thigh in. And then once the thigh is rolled in, I can fold further down. Inhale, lift yourself up. Go ahead and take that roll. It's still around. And place your the front of your feet on the roll. Pull forward. And look, and if you know you put the front of the feet on the, the roll and you're folding forward in your chanasana again, see if the uh, leg that tends to roll out is still rolling out as much. It may not because of the different position of your feet. It may do it worse. But lift your quadriceps up. Hold down. Then come out. So we're going to do some standing poses, just a, just a few of them. But I want you to use, even if you're flexible, use a tall brick. And I'm going to take this one up to the side just so you can see. Oh, that's my real right. There we go. So 
So if you don't have a break, don't worry about it. Just do the poses anyway. So take your arms and legs apart. Turn your right leg all the way out. All right. Take your right hand down. Trikonasana. All right. Now look at your knee. Now for me, this pose, the knee goes exactly where it's supposed to. But yours may turn out. You want the knee in line with the second toe, third toe, somewhere there. Then take your left hand on your hip. And you're going to keep, this is why we're using a tall block. You're going to keep your knee going in that same line between the second and third toe and bend your knee a few times. So keep the movement slow. But bend it as close to 90 degrees as your body will allow which for most of you is 90 degrees. So notice this tracking when we're focusing on the knee, because frequently the knee uh, goes in or less frequently goes out. So hopefully doing this, you don't, you're not feeling any kind of uh, bad sensations in your knee. You shouldn't, I, I don't feel anything in my knee. And so for maybe a little uh, locking when I go like that, I have to watch that. All right. And then come down to bent all the way. Take your left arm over your head and finish the bows. Take your left arm up. Straighten your leg. Inhale, come up. Turn your feet to the other side. Left leg out, right leg in. Come to Uchita Trikonasana. Well, so far it does have a block. All right. <laughs> then, looking at your knee, see if it lines up with your second and third toe. And then take your right hand on your hip and watch your knee as you bend it. See if it stays in that line. You want it to stay tracking perfectly in line with the second and third toe. Also, if you get stiffness in the hips in the morning or just from sitting, this is while uh, a little bit unconventional in Iyengar yoga, this is a good way to start for that morning or afternoon, whenever you're practicing. to lubricate the joints a little bit before staying in a pose for a while. All right, so bend your left leg. Take your right arm overhead for Uchita Prashvakanasana. Straighten the front leg, lift the arm up, and come back up. The arms and legs apart. Okay, so now we're gonna just do a quick, or relatively quick, almost closed off, of, uh, we've been doing this a little bit. We're gonna go from trikonasana, back foot turns in, harsh trikonasana, kind of rigid trikonasana. So we're, I'm using tall bricks, harsh trikonasana, bending the front leg, Parshvakanasana two. Parshvakanasana. Or read the Parshvakanasana. All right. <laughs> All on one side. With the focus being 
Um, what the knee does, actually more accurately, what the hip does, which affects the knee in those poses. So lift your arms up. Turn your right leg out, turn your left leg in. Now, yeah, bigger stance, Chaya. There you go. Take your right arm down. If you can trick your ass up. Now, we're focusing on the front leg. So the back leg will turn, the hip will turn. But I want you to think in the front knee and think in the front hip. So as you turn your back leg in more, you're going to take your left hand out. So there's, there's some movement in the front leg. There's a lot of movement in the back leg, in the hip, but there's some in the front leg. And see if your knee is still pointing the direction you think it should point. Then keeping your left hand on the brick, turn away from the camera into Paravrita Trikanasana. And notice how your hip probably wants to push out. Now you have to keep it in line and then bring both hands down. And how that changes the relationship with the hip. Bend your front leg to 90 degrees. Place your hands on your hips, or actually lift them up into Nirvadrasana one. Then bring your hands back down. Turn your back toes uh, to the long edge side of the mat. So your foot's turned out again. Lift your left arm up and come into Parshvakanasana. This is very similar to Virabhadrasana too, more so than the straight leg poses are. Then bring that top arm down. You have to turn your back foot in again. And then switch to Paravrita Parshvakanasana with a tall block. Then bring that hand down. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, come up. All right, bring your blocks to the other side. So of course all this can be done with no blocks. But the idea being, it's easier to focus on what the hip is doing, what the knee is doing, what the foot is doing, if you're not worried about what the hamstring is doing. <laughs> so turn your left leg out, turn your right leg in. Bring your left hand down. Yeah. All right, look down at your leg. See if it's pointing the direction you think it is. Then you're gonna take your Right hand down at the same time, turn your right leg in. So now here we are in Parashvotanasana. See if the leg changed, even though you, you rotated the hips uh, on top of the leg. So I could talk about like how the leg fits in there and stuff, but what you're doing is you're moving the part that doesn't usually move over the part that usually moves. All right, then keep your right hand down, turn away from the camera, lift your left arm up. So notice how the foot wants to turn out, the knee wants to turn out, keep that from happening. And bring the top hand down, bend your front leg, lift your arms up, rear just the left. Two, well, one, I don't know, one of those. <laughs> Bring your hands back down, turn your back foot out, come into Parshvakanasana, extended side angle. Then turn back to the blocks. You might have to turn your back foot in some, although it's not turned in in the book. And then take your left arm over. You're coming into the twist. And then back down, hands on your hips, and back up. Turn your feet forward. All right. 
Okay, take a blanket or two. Place them on the mat. Put your hips on the blankets and your shoulders on the floor. Bend your knees and towards your chest. Straighten your legs. Squeeze your legs in. Spread your toes. You can take your legs apart here. And now that the uh, foot isn't weight bearing, you can see what happens to your knees and your feet, your ankles. And squeeze your legs together. And sometimes when the legs are together, it's easier for the knees to point the same direction. I can't think of when it would be harder. <laughs> Maybe if you were even more knock me than I am, or the opposite, or like, really I don't know. All right. So keep uh, your left leg where it is and lower your right leg towards the floor. You can take your arms overhead too. You want to do something with your arms. And switch legs. Keep your quadriceps engaged, your knees straight. And whether your point reflects the foot, it has slightly different effects. Oh, you're all right there, Kathy. Switch legs. Switch legs. Switch. 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 Both legs up. I think I ended on the wrong way, but anyway, doesn't matter. Alright. So, I'm going to assume that everyone's legs are up. There might be something going on. Yeah. Squeeze your legs together. Lower your legs down halfway. Bring them back up. Lower your legs halfway. Back up. All right, so for many of you, this is plenty hard. So know that the only one looking at you, and that's only sometimes, is me. Uh, so, uh, if you need to s stay with the one leg out at a time, that's fine. Uh, if you want to get rid of some blankets to make it harder, for most people that makes it harder, then you get rid of one or two blankets. And then lower the legs that way. Lift them back up. Exhale, bring your abdomen in. Lower your legs halfway. Bring them back up. I wonder how many of these we could do before like people would just start leaving the meeting. All right, lower your legs that way. Bring them back up. Right. So there's one more thing you can do to make this more difficult other than going down further. And that's to have a block between your feet. And this also, this feedback, this is, think of the block as feedback. So if you want to feel this, you don't have to go down, you can just put the block between your feet and see how then now the hips are loose, the legs are loose, it creates this extra instability. So 
the, the thing with abdominal or core poses is their main job is to keep you stable. So by adding some instability of the block, you're making it more work. As you can hear my voice probably. All right, uh, that's good enough. Come on. Now this has nothing to do with the knees, but we're gonna lie on our bellies and work the other side of our core. So, lie prone, getting ready for salvasana. So if you need a blanket under your hips, put that there. Have your hands by your hips. Let's see. Kathy, do you have a question? I see you. All right. Roll your thighs in. All right. Roll your shoulders towards each other. Lift your legs up. Lift your chest up. And extend your arms back. So extend out through the big toe side of your foot. See if that helps you roll the thighs in a little. Extend through your fingers to take your shoulders away from your neck. Look slightly forward, don't look all the way up. That will strain the neck. And then lower back down. All right, roll your thighs back in, take your arms out to the sides of the T. Activate your quadriceps, so using your quadriceps, lift your legs, lift your chest, lift your arms, fly like Peter Pan. Roll your inner elbows forward to bring your shoulder blades into your back. Lift your chest some more, lift your legs some more. See how far you can lift your legs without letting go of the engagement of the quadriceps. And then come down. All right, if that's okay on your back, then you can take your arms forward. If not, keep them either to the sides or back. So fly like Superman. Engage your quadriceps, lift your chest, lift your legs, lift your arms. Extend through your fingertips, extend through your toes. You can lift your legs a little higher with your quadriceps active. Ah, oh, there you are. And come back. All right, push back into child's pose. or whatever is comfortable for you. All right, come on to your hands and knees. Come up into downward dog, bottom of your shoulders. Keep your thighs pushing back and come forward to plank. Plank. Forward to plank. There we go. Back to downward dog. I have to ask a question. So come down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you're all unmuted, so just so you know. Okay. Not cursing. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, do you guys remember when we had the blocks and we used them for the hands to lift the wrist a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if that's useful for you, we're going to do Chaturanga and um, Dog. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mute you guys. Um, then, uh, so if you want to do that, you can take that, that sticky mat. Sticky mat probably works better than a blanket. And you can have the blocks. Oh, what a messy sticky mat, man. Tilted, oh, that's a lot of tilt. Tilted slightly down so that when you come into upward facing dog, there's still a tilt rather than that uh, pressure on the wrist. So if that was useful you, to you, go ahead and get that set up. I'm going to use blocks even though I'm not going to use that tilt because that tilt, I don't, I don't have wrist trouble yet anyway. Um, so, but I like blocks for upper dog. So, blocks, no blocks under the hands, tuck the toes under, lift your hips up. Keep your quadriceps well engaged, come forward to plank. Then to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. If you want to roll on the toes, you can do that. Or to just slowly move them. And then tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Forward plank. Come into upward facing dog. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha, Svanasana. Okay. So that is some work. But you can add to it by from plank, moving to Chaturanga Dandasana, keeping your legs firm, and then to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Yeah. And then back to Auto Mukha Svanasana. Now I wasn't showing or demonstrating, I was just telling you what you could do. So plank, possibly Chaturanga, Urdhva Mukha, Auto Mukha. Let's do that again. Yeah, I can watch. That's good. Forward to plank, or wherever you are, Chaturanga. Urdhva Mukha, Adho Mukha. All right, last one. Forward to plank, Chaturanga, Urdhva Mukha, Chaturanga, plank, Adho Mukha. All right, walk forward. Take your feet at least uh, sticky mat distance apart. And hold on, the opposite elbow, rest down. said, uh, I wasn't taking class, I was listening to a lecture. Um, anyway, John Schumacher, not that I remember who it was, uh, <laughs> said in sequencing, you don't want to get tired of your students out and then make them do headstand. So, which is what I just did. Uh, well, you know, you guys are tough. Maybe I didn't tire you out. Uh, Anyway, so you don't, but the point being that you don't want to do headstand if your arms are exhausted. 
because all you're going to do is crunch up your neck like this. You want to be able to push down on your arms so that uh, you can safely do headstand on your neck. So for the alternative today, I want you to do what we were doing earlier so you get your arms a rest, but just lift your legs up into the air like this. Because this will teach you how to go up into headstand with straight legs, which I rarely do. But it's a possibility most days. So in whatever position you choose, come up either into Shirshasana. Now, of course, this doesn't fit in with the theme today of, of the knees and how the hips and feet affect the knees. But if you can see your own camera, you can, I guess it would have to be pretty close to your legs. And actually, Karen's orientation would be better than mine um, to see. <laughs> She's got her strap on and everything. Um, because you can see what your knees are doing when you're upside down, which is a, a test in proprioception. Um, to see how your legs are fitting together. Of course, part of the problem is uh, you might think that your legs are turned down, but really it's your waist that's short on one side. Yeah. So press your upper arms into the floor. See if both arms are pressing evenly. And if you have a little tightness in one side of the neck, you can try moving your head back and forth and seeing that sometimes Putting more weight on the tight side is helpful. So roll your thighs in, join the bases of your big toes, and squeeze your legs towards each other. Now, frequently when I do handstand or headstand at home, I take my legs apart, only because I feel like I have my own personal heater. And having my legs together keeps me even harder. But traditionally, it's done with the legs together and it's a little easier to balance. All right, so before you come down, bring your awareness to your arms and press your arms strongly into the floor, lift your shoulders up the back, keep that, and then slowly lower your legs down. Rest into child's pose, everyone. Let the head release, let the neck release. All right, uh, handstand is next on a Mukha Prakshasana. Now, if you want to watch me go up, um, I'm pretty sure what I do is uh, my left arm will bend a little bit and my left leg will roll out. So chances are you do something similar, but, uh, and, you know, right or left leg. But, so I don't know how easy this will be to see on Zoom. Uh, it's much easier to see in a class. Anyway. So I'm gonna to try to focus on my left leg because I know that's the leg that likes to get wobbly. And here we go. And it's still turned out a little bit. This one's still bent a little bit. That's my left. So and I'll try it with the other leg. And that one went a little better as far as the legs, not as far as the arm. So kick up at least twice or do L pose. But when you do L pose, 
The tendency is to always lift the same leg up. So lift up with the other leg and then switch. So it's the same kind of experience. Yeah. Or you can do that. Yeah. So do something. Yeah. All right, I'm unmuting you, Bob. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, you do have a bolster behind you. I was wondering. Um. Yep, slam into that bolster, so Bob. Go up. There we go. Well, the other leg usually doesn't work as well. Yep, I see you back there, Marsha. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Kathy, you still need to go up? Oh, are you doing L pose? Okay. Yeah, you could go up with two legs too. Oh, maybe a little hard on the back. One of the ways to train to go up with two legs is that block again. And this actually makes it harder, but, and I'm probably gonna slam my head into the wall. Let me just check where it is. So to go up, you put the block between your knees. It's really hard. Anyway, moving right along, lie on your back. Knees bent, heels in close. All right, so this is a pose we're going to do Chaturj. Uh, without a strap or anything. It's just a warm up for shoulder stand. Um, but this is a pose where the knees go all over the place. So uh, first, with your, without any props except for the mat, just look at your legs, see if they're pointing where you think they should be pointing. And then hold the sides of the sticky mat, pressure up your arms down, lift your hips, roll your shoulders under, and then press down with your feet and lift your hips more. Now put more weight on the big toe side of your foot. That'll keep your, your knees from going out to the sides. And then also put more weight on your heel to lift your hips up higher. It helps you engage the back of the hand, the hamstrings, not really the back of the hamstrings, the back of the legs by pressing down more with the heel. And notice if one foot is pressing more on the big toe side than the other. So you have to press the one that's lighter more. And then come back down. Now find out where the heck you put that block. And put the block between your knees. Could be medium, could be skinny. Mark your heels in. Now, if you want to take a second block and put it between your feet, you'll get more feedback that way. Well, this is first try with just one block. So squeeze the block, lift your hips, roll your shoulders under, continue to squeeze the block. And notice, uh, at least for me, my legs get weak in this position. So first of all, that tells me that I need to work my hips more um, because there's, uh, well, technically my inner thighs more because it's hard for me to squeeze the block with any amount of force in this position. But this also should tell you that, you know, one leg will squeeze in pretty well and the other one won't. So that, chances are that's your leg that turns out. So this would be good practice to keep your legs 
uh, lined up together because it works both your quads, but also that uh, those um, AB doctor let uh, uh, add doctor moving in. All right, come back down. And then just like we did when we were doing Tadasana, you may want the foot block between your feet to be medium. And then the one between your knees to be narrow. So now you're going to get more feedback from the blocks. And do the pose one more time. So adjust yourself so your feet are pressing evenly into the block, the legs are pressing evenly into the block. You may have more power right here to squeeze your legs together. So see if you can keep that power as you lift up. Roll your shoulders under, put your heels down, and see if this one was any harder than the last one. Um, if it is, then chances are your foot was turning out to get your hips up, even though your knees were forced together. So squeeze your block, pressure up your arms down, press your heels into the floor, squeeze the block again, the knee block, the foot block isn't necessary to squeeze. And then lower back down. All right. So next you'll either set up for uh, chatouche with support, like this, or shoulder stand, or you can do a kind of, uh, I think we did this one of the first weeks we were tied up. <laughs> But with the feet on the wall, lifting the hips like this. You don't want to come up too close to the neck, but you can still get the feeling of shoulder stand without going all the way in. So sit up, whatever way works for you. Now, you can have a block. There's this kind of practice, this Zoom kind of practice, is a lot more like a home practice than what we have in the classroom. I was taking another class with another teacher, and uh, he said uh, that uh, the problem with not going to class is there's no social pressure, and you will perform differently at home than you do in class. And I, I, you know, I've been thinking about this because uh, I, I have a tendency towards lazy. Um, I need to remember that I do this, not to, I do yoga be healthy and strong and have a good range of motion, not to impress anyone. So I should work the same when I'm by myself as I am with other people. So whatever pose you're in, Roll your shoulders under well, press your upper arms down, but keep your neck and your jaw and your tongue and your forehead soft. And take some time and adjust to the pose. Me noticing that giant spider on the ceiling. I didn't notice before. Yeah. So if you're on a brick doing Sitibana, 
You could lift your leg, as long as the brick is stable enough, you could lift your legs into the air. But you two can see your legs without any uh, hindrance of, uh, you know, weight on the legs, meaning, you know, you're not pressing your legs into the floor, you're not pressing your feet into the floor, they're just floating. Now notice here, what's going on with the legs? Same refrain of, you know, what's going on with my feet? Is one foot turned in and my knees pointing the same direction, but the feet aren't pointing the right way. So for me, that's more likely because of my ankle problems. But I also have some hip discrepancies. So my left leg likes to turn out a lot more. So here I can roll that thigh in, extend to the big toe side of the foot, spread my toes. I spread my toes, it helps me keep my legs awake and working. And then I'm imagining pressing my heels into something to move my leg, my heels back but keep my hips forward. And then go back to your throat and your jaw, anywhere that you tend to carry tension. And tell yourself to relax there. And slowly come down. However, you wish to come down. And take a moment and rest off the block. Shoulders rested. If you're uh, from a shoulder stand, rest your hips on the blankets and your shoulders on the floor. Bend your knees in, turn to your side, and come up. All right, so if you're tight in the hips, or maybe in the hamstrings, we're gonna do giant or shasana. So you might want a blanket or two. You could just take your shoulder stand set up and sit on that. Or you can just sit on the floor with your legs extended. All right. Now reach under your right knee. Spread the, you know, if you feel under there, we're under all this extra stuff you'll feel these two uh, ropey, stringy-like tendons. So grab there, pull those apart, and bend your knee. Then keep the knee bent like this and take it out to the side. So, Bo, did you have a question? You're close to the camera. Okay. All right. So, uh, so this is now we're doing Janu Shasana, but if you were to do Padmasana, this is one of the safer ways for the knee to do it by bending it in and keeping it in close and turning it. So you're turning from the hip rather than 
like what I was talking about before, when you lift this up, there's a slight twist in the knee. And for many people that causes problems. Anyway, we're doing giant shirtasana. So turn towards your straight leg, lift your chest, elongate, and then walk your hands forward and pull over your straight leg. Yeah. Or grab the foot or grab the shin or whatever works. Walk your hands back in. Hold the ankle and the knee of your right leg and then lift the leg back up to the Marichyasana stage and then stretch it out. Grab hold of the left leg, find those ropey tendons. They used to be, a, <laughs> they used to be less of me, so they were easier to find. <laughs> so roll that, pull that to the side, and pull the knee in. So you're in Marichyasana. Then holding on to the ankle and the foot, keep the fold of the leg as you take the leg out to the side. Turn towards your straight leg, lift your chest, elongate. So this, this stage is very much like this, except the arms are down. So I was just showing like, sometimes, I, I personally don't like coming in this way. So that's why I almost never teach this. But I understand why people teach it because to get length in the sides of the torso so you're not just folding forward. But that's what we're doing here. So press your hands down, lengthen up, and then fold over the straight leg. And grab whatever is nearby. Walk your hands back in. Hold on to your knee and ankle. Stretch that leg out. Put your hands either side of both legs, press your thighs into the ground, lift your chest, and come forward. Ashimotanasana. You can come all the way forward. I'm just, I'm just watching. All right, and then come back up. Prepare yourself for Shavasana. Whatever Shavasana you like. I think the other day I showed this uh, two blanket for the legs. Uh, Shavasana, they kind of are in a V shape and you rest the leg on each one. This was a lot more comfortable than I was expecting it to be. So come into a Shavasana that's comfortable for you. Roll your shoulders under. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. And use the next few moments to focus on your breath.
Deepen your breath. Take your time. Bend your knees. Roll to your side. Roll a little further to your side and lift yourself back up to seat. Take your arms wide, lift your chest. Bring your palms together and turn your heart. Think of something you're grateful for. Namaste. Thank you all for showing up today. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. <laughs> If anyone's curious, I, I'm gonna show this. Uh, I made Wait. a rope, I made a rope wall. Oh, oh. So I have to show. I'll be there in a second. I just have to put a blanket in. So there's this useless piece of equipment <laughs> in here, and so. I missed the rope wall. So Necessity I, is the mother of invention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> You're so creative, girl. <laughs> what is that, Mary? What is this standing What's up? for? What's it really for? <laughs> This is a you do for exercise. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. And then the other side, uh, you can is for chin ups. So this, I yeah. can't, I can't do a chin up, but let's see that wide. It's really wide. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I can hang. <laughs> I can't do a chin up. Anyway, no one ever uses these things. <laughs> I don't know anyone that actually uses them, but we had one one time too. But. All right. You have a great weekend, guys. All right. Everyone have a good weekend. Bye, everybody. Take care.